Hello and welcome to the Spinal Cord Injury Forum. Tonight we are very pleased to welcome one of my favorite people, uh, Kurt Johnson, who's a retired rehabilitation counselor and has probably worked with many people over the years in our audience and has given classes before to our um, degree programs. Um, he's also now in his retirement, uh, right. an assistive technology specialist with the Washington Assistive Technology Act program, which he's gonna tell you about tonight. Kurt's talk is from duct tape to Velcro, using everyday materials to solve everyday problems. And I welcome you and thanks so much for joining us tonight. Thanks for the invite. A little bit of my background, I grew up in Wisconsin on a dairy farm and so rural that I went to the same one room country grade school that my mother went to. I had seven kids in my class and I was related to four of them. So, <laughs> so living that rural, uh, on, on a farm, we had to fix things. We didn't have the opportunity many times to run into town to get parts and that type of thing. So we had to come up with ways to fix things. So, so that kind of led to a, another career later in life when I moved to uh, the Lake Chelan, Washington area and bought a hardware store. And uh, in that hardware store, the first thing that people come in is, I've got a problem. So uh, help me fix it. So. In the little town of Manson, I had the hardware store and I did the fixing of things there with anything that was available in the hardware store. And then a third career led me here to the rehab medicine department up on 8 North, where I spent 21 years and uh, had a great joy of my life was spent up there with therapists and patients and uh, using assistive technology uh, later on and focusing on either getting people back to work or helping them transition from work and still be active and productive and that type of thing using uh, assistive technology. So my disclaimer, first of all, I work with the Washington Assistive Technology Act program and so uh, these slides are all property of WATAP and so they ask that if anybody ever wants to use any of these slides or pictures that please contact them to do that. The uh, Washington Assistive Technology Act program, WATAP, uh, we provide services to people with all disabilities throughout Washington State. We focus on technical support for assistive technology purposes and looking at devices that somebody might want to uh, try out. And if so, we will provide device demonstrations of that. And so we focus on everything from computer access to independent living to communication, vision, hearing, all these kinds of areas that have uh, assistive technology kinds of devices. If after our demonstration uh, it looks like that may be an appropriate device for somebody, we'll go ahead and lend that to somebody or loan it for a period of up to two weeks or so for them to actually try it out, whether it's at home or on the job or anything like that, to uh, see if it's going to be a functional tool for them. So we also be, are involved a little bit with device or with reutilization kinds of programs where uh, gathering whether it's uh, electronic devices, iPads, iPhones, and that type of thing. And even though people aren't using those, and a lot of people have discarded ones sitting around in their drawers, those are still very functional to a lot of people with regard to using them for uh, networking, for mapping, for using one on, on Wi-Fi and that type of thing. So we try to help people find those kinds of devices. And the, the other area we get into is the alternative financing. With regard to financing, we work with the Northwest Access Fund, Northwest Access, so it used to be called the Washington Access Fund, now the Northwest Access Fund, because uh, we're also working in Oregon now, and we provide, or they provide low interest loans for everybody from, it could be from ramping to some of the smaller assistive technology kinds of devices. So this is pretty much where we're at from a standpoint of who I am and who I work with right now. This is the definition of assistive technology from the uh, AT Act of 98. And then what we're going to focus on tonight is not the high tech kinds of things, but we're going to be looking at the modified and customized kinds of uh, assistive technology kinds of uh, applications that are available out there. When people think about AT or assistive technology, this is what they always frequently think about. They think about using mouth operated joysticks, they're using uh, eye gaze technology. Uh, we've got brain-computer interface now that's becoming more and more prevalent, a lot of robotics kinds of areas. And this right here is called the iSpeak system. The iSpeak system uses eye gaze technology. What, what I'm, you know, I'm looking at a small little eye gaze uh, keyboard in, in, with my eye right here. 
And as I'm spelling out a word using word prediction, I then look up and I dwell on another little red dot up there. And these are speakers, and it actually speaks what, I'm, what I've just typed out. So that's the emerging kinds of technology, the high-tech kinds of things. We're not going there tonight. Uh, we're looking at functional kinds of outcomes. We're looking at what's the quickest and easiest way to uh, overcome some kind of a barrier. So this is what I'm talking about. So not too long ago, I was asked to come out to a retirement community and work with a, a person who had a difficulty uh, reading their book, holding their book, and they couldn't hold it in a proper position for any length of time. So using all the funds available, uh, back down to the nurse's station, two, three ring binders, and put it up. But I still had a problem. And what might that be? Anybody have a thought? Slides off all the time. So what's the solution? If there's any OTs in here, I think I have a few OTs in here. I know what your suggestion is going to be, and it's going to be blue, I'm sure. There it is. Dice them. Uh, but again, because I don't have very much money to buy dice em, which is about $25 for five feet or similar, something like that, uh, I backed down to the nurse's station, took all their coffee cups out, and uh, just get shelf liner. Shelf liner is available at any shop, anywhere. We're looking at uh, all kinds of uh, colors, patterns. Uh, shelf liner can be washed. Uh, we're looking at uh, $5 for 25 feet of shelf liner. It comes in all different sizes and everything. So I'm going to be passing some things around. Can I just give them to you and you can go from there? Before everybody got here, I put cameras around. So if anything's missing at the end of the night, I know where to find you. Okay? Including your cameras? <laughs> I have lost my cameras. But I would like to, again, this to be as informal as possible. So if people have ideas, other suggestions, Regarding the kinds of materials we're going to be talking about, just throw your hand up and let, let's all share that kind of information. So when we think about functional solutions, this is some of just some, some basic things that we're looking at here. I was working out in my shop the other day, and so my pens kept rolling off the counter. So with zip ties, everybody knows what zip ties are. I just put them around the pencil and my knife, and they don't roll off anymore. I had a person who had a hard time hanging on to the glass and when it was slippery and, and kind of wet. So just by putting some, uh, some rubber bands around the glass made it so that they could hang on to it for a longer period of time. Uh, my daughter uh, came up with this idea where she was having a hard time watching her favorite video while she was doing her hair. So she took her hair clip and set it on the back of her phone and is able to do that now. I'm, I'm proud of my daughter for being a problem solver. But not as proud as I am of myself when I'm on vacation and my flip-flop blows out. Has anybody ever had that happen to you when you tear it out? So thank God I had my MacGyver kit with me with my zip ties in it. And so you put a zip tie through the hole and you can still put your toe in there until you can go back and get that repaired again. So, so these are some of the functional kinds of things that we're thinking about here. So, so some of the considerations of doing low-tech, no-tech kinds of solutions are using a little bit of mechanical aptitude and having enough confidence in yourself to actually do that and know that uh, it, it's not always going to be right the first time you try it. So every time you try it, something positive is going to come out of that. Uh, you want to be thinking about the different kinds of methods and techniques. You want to be thinking about the materials you're working with. Are they sharp when you're working with them or are they going to get sharp after continuous use? Uh, are there odors? One of the things that uh, we made a while back was just a, a typing stick. And on the end of the typing stick, everybody's used uh, the, the gel, the, uh, the silicone around the kitchen sink, that type of thing. You know that there's that kind of a, a strong odor from that, kind of a vinegary kind of an odor. Well, if you're using that in a small room, whether it's a, a patient room or a bedroom or something like that, for some people, that's uh, not very pleasant. So, uh, you want to be thinking about the kinds of odors that some of these things can emit. Um, when we think about the low-tech, no-tech kinds of things, we're just prototyping. These don't have to be long-term kinds of solutions. What we're looking at is a bridge to get some, we, we know that we need to get a commercial device, but until that device comes, let's make something to help us be functional until that time. So these are some of the tools. Not a lot of electricity used with a lot of the low-tech, no-tech kinds of things. We've got 
uh, scribers here where we can use for plexiglass. We've got uh, punches or, or PVC cutters, hot glue guns, and this is why my wife hates me because she's lost her torch, her kitchen, her dessert torch it seems to be gone. I know where it is. Uh, but we're going to talk about that a little bit later. So everyday problems, we're looking at positioning, stabilizing. We're looking at things like using the iPad. Many people have a hard time. If we have uh, upper level uh, difficulty, whether it's weakness, fatigue, those kinds of areas, looking at using an iPad. Inadvertent strikes from the iPad. So a lot of people are asking, you know, how do you keep from making those inadvertent strikes? So again, one of the things that I did years ago in the patient room was take the, a sock and just cut a hole in it, slide a hand in the sock, and it works fine. Now a lot of people say, you know, well, why don't you just take a glove and cut the finger? Well, that works fine for some people. But if you've got a high-level spinal cord injury, trying to put a glove on your hand sometimes is quite another story. So uh, I tend to think that a sock is easier a lot of times, or uh, developing and using some kind of a stylus possibly. And we're going to be talking about making your own stylus here a little bit later. Another issue that we've come up with a lot of times is infection control and, and wetness and salivation, that type of thing, getting on the, uh, the tablet. And one of the solutions that we have is just taking a three-ring binder with the plastic cover again and sliding it inside the plastic cover of that. <coughs> and putting it inside the plastic cover keeps it dry, uh, easy to take back out. Another thing that works is a, five, or is a gallon Ziploc bag works fine, but it's about an, a, a quarter of an inch too big, so you want to tape it around and put some tape on the back side of that. So other kinds of uh, uses for paper clips and binders when uh, looking at uh, using uh, a, a microlight switch like this right here. Again, I didn't have a way to have that uh, positioned properly for a person to use for using external mouse clicks as uh, simply putting it on a paper clip and putting Velcro on it so they could tap on it with their chin and uh, a quick and easy way to uh, set that microlight. Pulling a straw in and then a hot gluing uh, a clamp to that. So again, simple as duct tape. Man's Best friend, second best friend, because the best friend, I think, is the TV remote. I'm not sure. Uh, but again, here's a, a photo of some of <laughs> the primary solutions for duct tape. Uh, my, my daughter moving to her new house. And of course, in my garage, my refrigerator to hold the beer and stuff in so it doesn't slide around too much. But again, looking at functional kinds of solutions, quick solutions to something called while here, uh, we used to work a lot with uh, folks, and sometimes from, from school districts or with traumatic brain injury, uh, a young man worked, had an opportunity to work in a restaurant here. And so part of one of his essential job functions was to help make pot pies or to pre-cook the pot pies, and it took eight minutes for that pot pie to cook. But if you think of that micro, or the membrane uh, on the front of the microwave, there's tons of, there's numbers, there's popcorn, there's potatoes, there's all these different unnecessary kinds of uh, buttons that have to push. So to get rid of those, we simply use, again, all the money available to us from the state of Washington down, take a piece of paper, and just cut out the important parts. So we cut out the start button, eight minutes is important, and the start button here, and oh, the door opener. So again, just masking is a huge and easy way to solve a lot of people's problems. Uh, again, we've used masking for everything from uh, on the uh, TV remote controls to mask off all those other buttons that aren't necessary there to uh, on a computer keyboard, just putting some, a lot of these are, are quick kinds of things, but we just want to solve this problem for the, for the meantime, for the short term anyway. Besides holding the door open, who's got an idea what this could be used for? Anybody? Ronnie, I'm going to put you on the spot tonight, buddy. <laughs> uh, yeah, a wheel lock. Uh, so the carts don't roll around. Uh, in this case, we had a, a phone that we had, they couldn't hold it, and so we put Velcro on the back of the phone and put it on there, but, and it put it at that nice 45 degree kind of an angle. The problem that we had with this, though, it was, it was a little bit wobbly, so we ended up putting some cardboard on the bottom. Uh, that so it didn't fall over all the time. 
In this case, we had a, a, another young lady who had, a, following a traumatic brain injury, uh, was required to use a Penny and Gal's joystick with uh, the ball on the side. Um, the problem was her hand kept falling off the ball. She couldn't keep a grip on that to, to operate the joystick. So back down to the hardware store again, back to the PVC department, and make uh, a joystick uh, uh, holder for it, uh, a goalpost holder for it. Now, if you go to buy this, I'm sure all UOTs know what it costs to buy a goalpost for any kind like this, where this device right here, I think, costs around 4 or $5 max. Uh, the biggest cost is going to be in some of the materials for the, to hold the, that in place. So in, in my mind, one of the biggest and most important parts of doing this type of work, looking at the low-tech, no-type solutions uh, for people, is to actually make sure that you're communicating with whoever you're working with there. Uh, get the family input. Many times, families have come up with some truly novel kinds of solutions to uh, overcome the issues that somebody's struggling with. And in this case, uh, one of my past patients went home and couldn't afford to get a computer workstation. So they uh, and their attendant went back down to the hardware store and bought uh, ABS pipe and plywood and made their own computer workstation. Now the problem with this was right here, the wooden floors. So with those wooden floors and the casters that were on there, every time he'd bring his wheelchair up to it, it would nudge forward and he couldn't keep it in place. It was just moving around all the time. What, besides putting something underneath the wheels, some, does anybody have a weight? What can we do to keep that from being quite so flexible? Any ideas? Well, what he did, what they did, was went back down to the hardware store and they bought cement and they poured cement inside the ABS pipes and they weighted this thing down so that it was held in place. It, it wasn't so heavy that it couldn't move, but it was heavy enough that it didn't just move around too easily anymore on, on the wooden floor. This is another past patient. This is a young lady who had uh, flesh-eating bacteria a disease that took her fingers and all she had left was the stubs of her hand and her and her dad, she wanted to continue to use her computer. So she and her dad came up with this solution and uh, they glued the wooden blocks to the mouse click buttons, added a little bit of Dyson here that I'm sure one of the OTs loaned her and uh, made this so that she could drive her mouse and still make the clicks with the stubs of her fingers there. So of course, professional comes in and says, well, that's really great, but you know, we have all kinds of other devices that you don't have to do this kind of thing with. Well, that's not what she wanted to hear. The key here is that she wanted to use this. She was proud of this, and she wanted people to ask her about it and show off their problem-solving skills that she and her dad had. So, so again, I can provide solution, other solutions to people, and I think that's the key that I want to do is to give somebody ideas that they can do but I'm not here to say this is what you have to do. Simply provide other thoughts that they can go with, but she continued to use this for the long term. Okay, Alan, another quiz for you. What's this? So cabinet bumpers, and what do we do with cabinet bumpers besides keep our doors from banging? A lot of people have a hard time if they have an iPhone sometimes and they have difficulty with uh, fine motor or strength hitting that home button. If you have a cabinet bumper, and I'll pass these around, and you put that cabinet bumper on the home button right here, that's going to make it three times easier to activate that cell phone. But sometimes you want to use, they want to use Siri, but they can't hold that long enough to work with Siri. So again, back to taking all the money available from the state of Washington, we get a tongue depressor, some Velcro, and put the on and make a lever so that he can then just take his hand around and push on the on the cabinet bumper, which is right there, to hold a work with Siri. Now the key here is what do we do when we have a tablet? That's a little bit bigger. And the the other part of this is you want to have some kind of a, a, a mount. In this case, we're using a Manfrotto arm 
uh, with a RAM mount to hold the cell phone. But when you have a tablet, that's a little bit more difficult to hold. So uh, back down to the hardware store, back to the paint department this time, and just hang a paint stick down. And with the cabinet bumper here, now they can just have to push on that lever to act activate Siri or uh, use their, the tablet. So here is the reason that I love low-tech, no-tech. And the, the reason of this is right here. It's, it, it's this smile. It's, it's somebody can finally do something that they haven't been able to do independently for a long, long time. This patient loved photography, couldn't uh, use his camera anymore until we had it mounted. We know that the, the solution, the true solution here, is to get the external switch that attaches to the camera. But in this case, we had the, the camera ready to go, and we're just waiting for it to come. So how do we come up with a solution? Is to, again, with a, a, a tongue depressor, cabinet bumper, tubing, lots of tubing in the rehab medicine departments. And all he had to do with a loop down here was stick his hand out and pull down on this to, act, to activate his camera. Again, he didn't have to wait three weeks before that switch came. He could actually do this and participate right now. So cabinet bumpers are used for any variety of things. In this case, for a book, when somebody had a hard time turning the covers of a book. Uh, but cabinet bumpers can be expensive. Uh, they can be five, six dollars for a little sheet of them. So the next best thing is your hot glue gun. And with the hot glue gun, this is why my grandson doesn't like me because I take his gifts and use them for training purposes. Put the hot glue, just put a dab of hot glue between the pages, whether it's a, a, page, maybe it's a book like this, maybe it's a journal or something like that. But you just put a dab of hot glue between the pages and it makes it much easier for somebody to open that up. So all thinking about all the different kinds of tapes that are available at the hardware store. Uh, we have reflective tape. And reflective tape we're going to talk about a little bit later because reflective tape is found in the, sh or in the uh, air conditioning section of, your hot, of the hardware store. But this is the kind of tape that you can make all kinds of styluses with. So you put this tape on any of, on a piece of dowel or whatever, and it's going to activate that tablet or that cell phone, whatever you've got it attached to. Uh, everybody knows about gorilla tape or duct tape silver. If you live on the other side of the mountains, though, silver duct tape doesn't work very good in the winter time when it's really cold out. What you need is black tape, black gorilla tape. You've probably heard of gorilla glue, gorilla tape. I'll pass uh, this around. This is a one inch, comes up to two inches, two and a half inch. But this stuff is sticky. This stuff will hold almost anything together. So uh, this is a great material right here. Rug gripper, back to the flooring section. Again, rug grippers uh, 948. This is at the Home Depot uh, for a roll like that comes in a box that looks similar to this. I can actually pass that around. I'll load you up there, Chris. So Rug Ripper has all kinds of different kinds of solutions that people can, can use it for. A lot of times, if people have something that's sliding off their lap all the time, take a strip of this, put it on your, on your thighs, and it won't slide off. It's, it's tacky, but it's not sticky. It can be used over and over again. And when it is no longer enough to use, why throw it away and tear off another piece. I also use it for a lot of folks who have a hard time turning pages. So when they don't have the fine motor to turn the page in the book, I can take this tape and put it around my finger, and now I can swipe across and turn the pages. Because of flaccid fingers sometimes, that's still not going to solve the problem. So what I'll do is I'll take and put it on the back of my hand, and now we can just swipe through to turn the pages as they go on. So this is, is great stuff. If you want to, feel free to tear off a piece and take it home, 
If you can't tear it off, we'll help somebody help you take a piece if you want. But uh, rug ripper is, is great stuff. Uh, gaffer's tape. Gaffer's tape is frequently found uh, in any kind of the uh, video industry. The I bet we probably have some in a bag over there with the camera. Gaffer's tape is, is similar to rug gripper, because, but the thing is it doesn't, it doesn't leave residue on things usually. So you can make all kinds, it comes in all different colors. In this case, you can see all different colors that it comes in. Uh, people can make all kinds. In this case, they just made a quick a keychain out of a paper clip and a pencil and uh, for the keys. But this is gaffer's tape, and uh, I would I'll pass that around there. And then we have something called Tommy tape or self-adhesive kinds of tape, and this is usually found in uh, a lot of automotive stores. Now this tape isn't uh, adhesive, but this tape will stick to itself so that if you don't want to leave any kind of residue on anything, you just pull this and you stick it around itself and it will adhere to itself. And then when you're done, you just cut it off and off you go. So if you want to uh, attach something to the tubing on a chair or something like that, you can wrap it several times with Tommy tape here, self-adhesive tape. and. Uh, I'll pass this around. You can see it's already sticking to itself there a little bit. Another expensive item. What do we have here? $2.97 for 12 feet of pipe wrap. Pipe wrap comes from half inch to three quarter inch to one inch and almost as big as you want to get it sometimes. But there's tons of uses for pipe wrap. Uh, I'm sure that some people they're already using this. Uh, my father-in-law has it across his basement because his ceiling is too low when he comes down the stairs. Uh, but here is some of the things that we tended to use pipe wrap, whether you're using it to uh, make a handle bigger for better grip, whether you're using it on a device. This is one of my favorite joysticks to use for the computer. But the problem is the mouse click button is on the top of the joystick. Well, where's the, the natural way to uh, grab it? You just go to the top, and every time you grab it to use it, then you get a mouse click. So you can take this out of the equation by cutting off a piece of pipe wrap that's about a quarter of an inch higher, sticking it on here. And now I have an even bigger handle I can, I can grab onto and drive. But then you ask, how do I do the mouse clicks? And I think this is the key to, to remember for not only this situation, but tons of situations, is to, to, to take the mouse click out of the equation. N navigate, navigate, but take the mouse clicks out. And you can do that by using a microlight switch and a mouse click interface, which are not very expensive. We'll, we can loan you. We want to try these out. Uh, but again, you just hook. The USB to your computer, hook this to the microlight switch, and now I hook this to the side of my chair or wherever. I dry the joystick and I do by tapping on this to do my mouse clicks. I want to drag, I just tap and hold, and I drag, play solitaire to my heart's content. Um, so I think that taking that mouse click out of the equation is a huge piece, not only for what I'm talking about right here, but also, for any issue when people are having a hard time doing the mouse clicks with their fingers, t put a cover on top of those and, and use an external switch somewhere to, to, to do that. Here's a situation with one of the other patients that I had where we were actually uh, using that same joystick. And back to the hardware store again, and we made a goal post for her using PVC pipe. Actually, this is CPVC. We'll talk about that in a minute. But using pipe here and uh, the, the pipe wrap. And she is with her elbow over here tapping uh, with doing the external mouse click. So she's driving. She's navigating, targeting, tapping to get the mouse clicks. 
Uh, another way that we've used it is to make a lever. We, we know that the, the answer here is to, to buy a lever handle do, on doorknob, uh, but that's going to take a while to get. So we can, in the meantime, we can just use some pipe wrap around the knob and with a, a zip tie make a lever handle until that comes. So I had another patient who had a hard time holding a stylus for, on their uh, tablet. Uh, we took, this is a, a pogo stylus, I don't know if you all quite acquainted with pogo styluses, they're cheap, cheap, cheap little styluses that you can get. But to take that stylus and stick it through the pipe wrap, and now I actually have a handle. I have the skin touching the stylus so it's activated, and now I've got a handle to go ahead and use whenever I, I'll pass it around. Sugru. Anybody ever use Sugru? So almost all the materials that I'm showing you tonight can be uh, are available from Microsoft or for, uh, from Microsoft from Amazon. And I'm not here to promote Amazon, but this kind of stuff is all available from them. Uh, Sugru is a, a little bit expensive, but Sugru is is a great product because you can it, once you take it out of its little packet and it uh, cures. It remains kind of spongy, but it's stick it's stuck right to whatever you're, you put it on. So in this case, because we had some of a vision impairment, we took Sugru and we just highlighted the numbers that were important to them uh, for doing the microwave. And so we have numbers one, three, and five, and then the stop and the start buttons were highlighted uh, with the Sugru. Other people have used Sugru, and it's about uh, 15 bucks for an eight pack. Uh, around hand to make little handles, to make uh, knobs to hold things around different buttons. It, it's a, it, when it's cured, it's kind of a soft, spongy kind of a, a feel. So it's a, a little bit different material, but it's, it's very cool. Uh, Thermomorph, is anybody, all these OTs that are here, anybody use Thermomorph yet? This is an Amazon product. This jar costs $22 and it will last a long, long time. Uh, what's in, these little beads, are about the size of a BB, uh, tapioca, that size, small little beads. You take a, a teaspoon scoop out and you put it in hot water, I think 140 degree water, and once it comes out, it's clear and it's like soft butter. It, it doesn't run, but it's, it's very soft and malleable. So what do we do then? We make things, whether you're making a handle for uh, the back of your cell phone or to, to hold the pencil. In this case, I took, I mean, these things that I'm showing here, I, these literally took two minutes to make. Uh, I just, I grabbed a, a spoon, took some uh, Instamorph, put it around there, just stuck my finger in it, and now I can hold that pencil a little bit easier. Again, I see that it's, after all my demonstrations, it's starting to break up a little bit, but Another uh, one was to come up with a way to keep somebody's finger straight to make a little splint for the finger. It's to work on the tablet. But because I'm retired, you know, I need I like to work in the garden. And a lot of the trowels that I have, you know, you don't get a very good grip on the trowels a lot of times. And so I took my garden trowel and I made, got my Instamorph and I made myself a customized handle. And so a lot of times the, making these kinds of handles solves a lot of problems from the standpoint of uh, just fatigue and that type of thing. But it takes two minutes to use this kind of stuff. So Instamorph is a a great material to use. And the, the nice thing about it, on this picture here that you see of the, the iPhone holder here, it's flexible. Once it's cured, it's flexible enough we could pop it back off and back on again. So, thermomorph. So then we have acrylic, and acrylic is a little bit harder for some people to use. But I tend to use it a lot. It's something you want to practice on a little bit. It's at the hardware store. I use uh, about, a about a little less than an eighth inch uh, acrylic. And we do things like 
make uh, document holders. And again, this is the rug gripper you see up here, Velcro and the document, the plexiglass or the acrylic right here. This is where my wife's dessert torch went. So you scribe, you snap it off, and then you go back and forth about 15 strokes, and it's soft and malleable. You bend it to where you want it, and it stays right there. I had another patient who uh, had very, very limited range of motion. We were doing a lot of uh, work with using switches and scanning. And because of that limited range of motion, we, uh, I made this little holder, and I, one of my jelly bean switches is gone. But imagine there's a jelly bean switch on this side as well. But all she had to do was just put her hand, drop her hand down in and go ahead and just click back and forth to actually make the switches work with some Velcro on the back to, to hold that in place. Yes, you heat it up with that dessert torch, or you can get other little torches from the hardware store. And uh, if you don't want to heat it up too much, because if you heat it up too much, then you'll actually start smoking it and, and burn. Uh, but you just heat it up enough that you can bend it. And sometimes the, the edges are a little bit hard, so just take and, and heat your edges up just a tiny little bit and just roll it on a countertop, and that softens up the corners so it isn't sharp anymore. This is another situation where, you know, this patient, we had these uh, adhered to uh, the bedside table. But every time dinner would come, we'd have to take them off and set them to the side and then wait for somebody to come, once dinner was over, to come back and put them back in place for them. Well, what I found out was this is so much easier just to put some Velcro and a plexiglass on a three ring binder, which is, gives you a nice angle anyway. And then when he's ready to eat, he just slides that out of the way, has dinner or lunch, and then slides it back again. Uh, the thing about uh, these kind of suction cups, they're great on non-porous kinds of things like uh, plexiglass. But when you're on formica like this and it's over the evening, there's going to be some air loss or air gaps in there. Uh, so I, I wouldn't leave a tablet, per se, on, one of the, on formica overnight. Epoxy putty, another situation where we're working with a young person and they can go to work right now, but the problem is they can't turn the faucet. They have handles on the faucet. Well, this, uh, with the solution is obviously uh, buying faucet handles or, fa or faucet with handles on it. In the meantime, though, we can come up with a solution where we can make our own by using PVC pipe and epoxy putty and making a handle until the other one comes. Uh, Velcro solutions, everybody's a fan of Velcro here, but uh, the thing that a lot of people don't know is that Dual Lock is another product similar to Velcro, the furry and the, the hook side, but Dual Lock has like, imagine little mushrooms, just rows and rows of little mushrooms, and when you take two sets of those and snap them together, the mushroom heads hold each other in place there. Um, so it's called Dual Lock, and it's used for if you want to hold things in place, whether it's a tablet or even a, a laptop in many cases. Here's a gentleman most of us might know. Came up with the solution for speech pathology, for communication issues, and uh, with the, the letter board, uh, the person couldn't hold their finger up to touch it. So he said, we'll get a laser pointer, we'll stick it on the hat. And so with that laser pointer, they can take the letter board now and just point out whatever letter that they want, which speeds things up considerably instead of going line by line to go down. Pink board is another uh, material from the hardware store. Get this in the installation department. Pink board is comes in uh, two by eight foot sheets a lot of times. Sometimes you get it in four and two by two foot sheets. Pink board comes, this is a one inch, one and a half and two inch. Very dense and uh, very, very easy to use because you can just score it and then snap it off. You can carve it, you can do any variety of things. Uh, lap trays, 
We'll use it for making uh, mouse trays from time to time. We'll stack it. So in this case, we knew that the, we need to get a systhand keyboard tray, but we want to make sure that it was going to work first. So again, we just uh, put several of these together to see if a person could stand and work at that position for any length of time. Uh, with this, um, there's, there's tons of different things you can do. So a lab tray like this, making uh, uh, foot rests to try right, why buy a foot rest when you can make one to stack a bunch of these up one on top of the other. And uh, again, it's, it's very, very easy to use. PVC, we got PVC, which is your irrigation kinds of pipe, CPVC, which is your hot water pipe, and then ABS is your black uh, drainage or sewer kinds of pipe. They each have different purposes and different things you can use them for. I tend to use a lot of CPVC for things that I do. Uh, and I like CB CPVC because of the fittings that are available with it. Uh, in this case, we have what's called a drop-eared L. And a drop-eared L is an elbow, but it's got little ears with holes in it so that I can screw this down to a table, screw it to the wall, or do whatever, and then put whatever piece that I'm working with in it. CPVC, uh, back to my MacGyver kit. Uh, quickly need to make a, a, a tablet holder. Uh, and there we go. So the problem with this, I, I, didn't, I don't glue this, but I put them together and it started to get loose after a period of time. So I just got some threaded stock from the hardware store with wing nuts and put it through. And now I can just tighten it up to hold it in place. But, Again, this is very functional because it allows you to put it at whatever angle uh, that you'd like to put it at. What is threaded stock? Threaded stock is a, 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 a bar, a, a, like a, ball, a bolt that's three feet long, and it, there's no, it's the same on both ends. And it comes all, it's very tiny from eighth inch uh, all the way up to as big as you want to get it. I uh, will also make a, a footrest. Uh, a laptop stand. And then you can go, you know, we all have these drawers. At home there are junk drawers, and in those junk drawers there's all kinds of solutions available to be found. I had an a situation where an individual, we needed to have uh, some kind of markers for them because of vision limitation. So dig around far enough in here, and oh, I got some colored buttons back here. Uh, I got some band-aids for when I get that sharp kind of a thing. But I want to go back. So we've got zip tie cables. We have 17 inch zip ties, chewy tubes. Does anybody know what a chewy tube is? Anybody? Some people do. Uh, aluminum wire, flagpole holders, moldable plastics, lock line, and all those other strange things found in your drawers. This is why my daughter hates me. <laughs> if she wants to play softball and she doesn't want to complain about her hair in her face anymore, why well, I can fix that for her. So again, using zip ties for a functional, quick solution. Or if you live over in Spokane in the wintertime want to ride your bike, you can use zip ties to give yourself a better grip. So this is a 17-inch industrial zip tie. They look like this. And you can do any variety of things. They're, they're nice and soft. And inside is a, an aluminum wire, which keeps them in place. And what you're seeing here is I had a patient who couldn't hold the stylus, so we simply wrapped the stylus up in his finger, and uh, it worked very, very well. Again, what do I use this for? Another iPad holder. The infamous chewy tube. Seen it before? <coughs> Again, you can get these on Amazon. They're a little bit expensive. I think they're like five or six bucks a, a, a piece, but they come in different colors. Uh, most of them are going to be in the form of a T shape, uh, but they're going to have different textures and that type of thing. And a lot of times they'll use them, uh, SLPs will use them for uh, children with autism and that type of thing uh, to chew on, uh, just distract them, that type of thing. I tend to use them for other things, as you can imagine. This is how they come. 
So I had an individual who had a hard time holding a pencil. So again, take the chewy tube with the hole in it, stick the pencil through it, and now I have a handle to hang on to while they're writing. Another uh, individual uh, used the mouse stick. He had a commercial mouse stick, work, mouth stick that worked very, very well for him, but it broke, unfortunately. So to bridge that gap until the new one came, we made one quickly using a chewy tube with a piece of dowel, quarter-inch dowel, and then back to that silver tape that I told you, the reflective tape from the hardware store. And as long as skin is touching this tape, it's transmitting all the way down so that uh, he can have this in his mouth and be still either typing or using his tablet or cell phone. Again, it's not the long-term solution, but it bridges until the, the, the new one uh, should arrive. But for a lot of the people I work with, that is a long-term solution. There is no time being for it. Well, exactly. What, what she was saying was for, uh, for a lot of people, this is the long-term solution because there isn't funding for a lot of these kinds of, of activities and, and, and barriers that people have. So uh, it's not elegant, but, it, but it, it's functional. And I think that's the key that we need to be thinking about, that uh, if we can make it work uh, and give people the independence using it, how much better does it get than that? We can dress it up all you want to. I mean, I've also seen uh, where they'll take, you know, put the silver tape all the way around, uh, which makes it even more functional. The tricky part of doing something like this, of making a stylus with this, is coming, with the, coming up with the end and making it a little bit soft. And to make it soft, I'll take like a piece of cotton, or I'll actually sometimes take a, a cotton swab and put that on the end and put the, the, the silver tape around that to, to give a little bit of a softness to that. Uh, so it, it takes a little bit of playing with some of this, and it's trial and error sometimes to make it work. But when it does work, it, it solves so many problems. Green wire, dandelion wire, clothesline wire. This wire is that eighth inch aluminum wire with a vinyl coating on it. Uh, again, you can get it at lots of different hardware stores. I'm not talking about the kind of vinyl coated stranded wire. This wire has a solid aluminum core to it. And I'll pass this around. You can tell how many times this has been played with as it's been passed around in the audience here. It's, it's almost tending to break. But, but again, quickly making things. In, in this case, I mean, I, I, we needed a, a dual solution. So probably you're acquainted with this little device right here. Uh, it's cap off of bag. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I took the wire, and so I have now a typing aid, or I can turn it over, tip it up, and I've got the silver wire around the back side, so now I have a stylus on the other side. Now, a lot of times, you can take this kind of wire, and with a universal cuff, everybody knows the universal, I think, universal cuff, uh, and double it up and maybe even wrap it with uh, some of that, maybe the, the um, self-adhesive tape, the Tommy tape. You can, you can decorate it up or do whatever, but you can make all kinds of typing aids or anything like that uh, with this kind of, of a green wire. And it'll last quite a while. It's quite flexible. So again, the green wire, uh, again, is available at most hardware stores. This is a situation where uh, w we just needed to have the microphone so we could do voice recognition kinds of textual kind of things on the tablet. Uh, the problem was we didn't have the fine motor. This individual didn't have the fine motor to stick the earbuds in his ear to get the microphone at the proper spot. So we took the green wire, made a bend in it. We attached the earbuds to that with the microphone right here. And now all we had to do was pick up the green wire and hang it on his neck. And it was in, the microphone was in the proper position for him to use to do the voice recognition kinds of activities. 
quick and easy way for somebody to use that. Uh, flagpole holders. I like this type of flagpole holder because it allows me to make all kinds of adjustments. And if you use two of them, I can uh, make the adjustments on the back side here. And I can get any kind of angle that I want. And in this case, what we're doing is using, this is a PVC, white ear schedule 40, uh, one inch. And we're making a stand to hold the iPhone so that we just attached it to a board. And now using Velcro on the back side of that to, for the iPhone for him too. So we didn't, again, just inexpensive ways to mount different activities. Now that be, it's another way if, if you wanted to have a switch mounted or anything like that, you could certainly do that. Come in. Uh, and then we have lock line. Does that, and everybody's seen lock line and it comes, lock line comes quarter inch. A half inch, three quarter inch, and there's tons and tons of different things that we can do with lock line. And what I like to do with lock line is uh, use it for a switch mount. And uh, for anybody who does, does anybody not know, have seen lock line? Lock line, you can buy it in a whole continuous loop, or you can frequently buy it from Amazon. It's in like little six inch uh, segments. And remember when we were kids and we had the pop beads and you snap them together? I do the same thing uh, with lock line here. You can get a kit uh, with about eight different uh, fittings and I think about uh, three feet of a quarter inch lock line in, in a kit. And I make different things, but in this case, back down the hardware store to buy a clamp. Now you can go out and you can you know, spend hundreds of dollars on switch clamps and that type of thing. But something like this, is, is very functional and uh, can be used in a, in a lot of different places for a lot of different things. So the thing with this, on occasion, it tends to, after it's been bent enough, it'll t start weeping on you a little bit. Uh, the way to tighten that up is, remember that green wire, that dandelion wire? I'll just take and stick dandelion wire down through here, and it'll stay plenty sturdy for a long, long period of time that way. Uh, this is another example of why I like external uh, switches for using with a mouse. Again, able to drive the cursor and do your mouse clicks with a simple microlite switch there to make it so much easier there. With, with lock line, I'm going to pass this. This is three quarter lock line, and I use the, a pop rivet gun to attach uh, the clamp to this. And so now I can put more lengths on here and make this into whatever I want. But I want to just give you an example of what the, so the pop rivet is. If nobody's used pop rivets for these are fabulous little devices to attach different kinds of things together. So in this case, we just use that pop rivet there to put the clamp on the end and be able to set that around. Uh, and this, if anybody hasn't, everybody's seen a ram mount? Uh, ram mounts are, uh, in this case, a ram mount is there to hold your cell phone. Uh, ram mount is a Seattle company. They originally started making uh, mounts for uh, people who are for the state patrol to hold their self or their laptops and that type of things in the cars They need them to be flexible and easy to use so in this case. We've got the uh, Cell phone holder right here, and all I have to do is take and Simple as simple as that and I can mount this any variety of ways that I want and then I, I discovered that one inch or three quarter inch uh, lock line will also fit into the fittings for the ram mounts. So now I can uh, make the ram mount uh, part with, and I can extend it to whatever I want using lock line with it. So uh, this is our address. And I think that uh, if everybody gets a flyer back there, you'll, you'll find the information back there for contacting WATAP. Again, we're here to uh, provide demonstrations of uh, any, all kinds of different 
uh, assistive technology that's out there. Uh, if that technology looks like it's going to be appropriate for you to use, well, we're going to loan that to you for a period of time. Uh, if you need help in finding out uh, financing for that, we can talk with you a little bit about that. Um, I think I'll open it up for if we have questions. Great. If anybody has. Yeah. All right. What questions do people have? She was wondering what the cost is of the RAM mount pieces. Uh, and they're all, I think that this, you can get this piece. This is the, the key to most of the RAM mount is this clamp right here. Because you open this up. And I want to say that this whole thing is probably about $50, $75 maybe. And, and, and I, I like using the RAM mount materials with the man. Does everybody know what the Manfrotto arms is? That's that super clamp. And, uh, uh, but a lot of people mount their, cell, their tablets on it and things like that. But you can mount the tablets on using these kind of RAM mount materials very, very easily. But it's not that expensive. I, again, it's all relative, but it's expensive. But yeah. So is that suction cup a part of the RAM mount? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this, the blue part, the lock line, is just put in there to give an ex extension to make it longer. So these would normally just be mounted right to that. And, you know, uh, for inpatient kinds of things, it's fabulous. It will any, any place that people are going to be mounting their phone for any length of time, take it on and off and that type of thing. Uh, we've had this mounted on windshields and that type of thing to give people. Uh, not that that's going to be the answer, of course, but... Uh, so again, the other nice thing about the RAM mount materials is that with the tablet mount, they're, they're just so easy to mount. There's not a lot of screwing and that type of thing. You simply just squeeze and, and put your device in there. Other questions? Yeah. Question is whether he's aware of a voice-activated emergency alert system. The closest that I could tell you is the, the new Amazon Echo that's out. There, Echo has something called skills. They don't have apps. They have what they call skills. And there's one skill, it's called My Buddy. And you can go into the, uh, the, the Alexa app and, and the My Buddy, and in My Buddy, you can identify up to, up to five people. And you can make a pre uh, uh, program message to those five people. And so when the fall occurs, the person just says, Call My Buddy, Alexa, call My Buddy. And, they, and that will then go out to those people and that this person needs you right now. It's, it's not going to call 911, but it's right. going to... You do need internet with that, yes. And I should also, we're going to talk about, I, I'm crazy about this device because there's, there's tons of things that are going on with this. So what he's talking about is you can uh, now use the, the standard echo or the, t the little tap or the dot, I mean, or the tap uh, to uh, text anybody anymore if they, have, if they also have an Alexa app. On their cell phone. Okay, just the Alexa app. They don't have to have, don't have, to have, the, have the device. They have to have the app. Wow. Um, you, there's, there's coming out with the uh, Echo Show. Echo Show is a video. Uh, it's not going to be available till, uh, until June 28th. And it is, and I'm not here to do a promotion for Amazon here, but I'm kind of, ex <laughs> I'm kind of excited about the show because it's going to actually let people do video uh, conferencing, video taping uh, between them. It'll, it, if you want to hear music, uh, it'll, it'll give you the lyrics to the music as it's playing. It'll play video clips for you. It'll do all the standard things that Echo does right now, plus give you the, the video side of everything. So kind of exciting. But that's we're, that we're talking back into technology here. We got away from. Any other question? I'm curious about um, how you managed to have people learn all this stuff. Obviously, you came from a fix-it kind of family and the hardware store. Um, how does somebody else kind of figure out or know how to do this or know where to go to ask questions? Well, here's what I suggest. I think that you find the oldest hardware store in town, and you find the oldest hardware store salesman you can find in there. <laughs> And you chat them up a little bit. Talk to them about what, what the situation is. What, are, what's some, what am I struggling with? What, what, what are your thoughts and suggestions? What's here in the hardware store that I can try? Uh, beyond that, it's a matter of, of trial and error and confidence building. And, and you're going to make 
errors. But here's the key in using all this and with, with any assistive technology. Number one is safety. We want to make sure that, there's your, that you're safe, that most of the, the person you're working with is safe. Uh, number two, reliability. If it's not reliable, as we all know, what's the purpose of, of AT? I need, to, I need to count on this. I need it to work the same way every single time. Uh, so I think that it's, it's a matter of, uh, over time, just gaining confidence in making lots of errors. I mean, you know, you know, Edison, you know how many errors he made in coming up with that light bulb the first time? Uh, thousands. And so I think that the more errors we make, the more we learn uh, from those errors, the more we try different kinds of materials to, to work with. You know, my goal is for you, the next time you go in a hardware store, never to look at it the same way again. Uh, but again, there's, there's tons of different things in the hardware store. I think that when you're, uh, another solution that to be thinking about is that when you're looking for adaptive devices, adaptive materials, uh, to use some kind of a search engine or whether, and I'm, I'll just use Amazon for an example. So if you want to uh, get an idea about uh, garden, adaptive gardening tools, then go to the Amazon site and go in the search bar, put a, start anything with adaptive, adaptive trowels, adaptive combs, adaptive brushes, adaptive whatever, and then look at all different solutions to get. Or go to Google or, or Bing and go to the Bing search bar and say, I want adaptive uh, keyboards. And when that list comes up, I mean, then you're going to get a whole list of websites to be looking at. But don't click on the web. Click on the images. And you're going to see tons of different images of, of different kinds of keyboards, uh, if that's what you're looking for, or of adaptive uh, dressing devices and whatever. But Start your search always with adaptive in that search bar, and you're gonna, and, and then go to images and just look at all the different images quickly uh, to get an idea.